When it came to the lighting sequence, did you ever think maybe in the harder difficulty levels, maybe making that an option of um, using it, or did you just choose as standard to leave it on all the time? Um, so like, uh, I was just saying that would be something you'll kind of learn as you play the game along, and then when you came back, it'll be difficult, but when you play the game again, wouldn't you find it easier to do? Oh, you're, you're talking mind. about turning the lights on and off? Yeah. Um, we found out players didn't, didn't find it fun to do to begin with. It became busy work that you had to do versus, you know, you know, anytime you have to do something and you know you have to go do it, it just isn't that much fun. It isn't that great to turn a light on. I think we all get to turn enough lights on in our life. So um, we just wanted to have it this way, and that way it's automated for you. Have you given the uh, AI director any new tools to be able to help improve the experience? Yeah, so um, one of the things we did is we, uh, for, like, for example, for this, uh, the, the AI director controls the weather. So if you're getting your butts handed to you and you're really low on health, you're not going to see a lot of storms come up. If you're doing really well, you will see storms come up. Um, also, we have some maps where uh, it actually reconfigure parts of the map. Uh, the par in the parish, there's a, a series of crypts. And as you load that map up, the director's looking at how you were doing, and then we'll reconfigure the, the order of that map. Um, and essentially in Left 4 Dead, in the world of Left 4 Dead, uh, distance equals hard, you know, difficulty. So the longer you make a path, the harder it is. And so the director, if you're doing really well, will make you a really long path. If it wants to insult you, there's actually once gotten a path was just straight through. So it that, has that. And the other big thing is it has three new specials that it could throw at you. It's got the charger, the spitter, and the jockey. And so how it throws those at you helps you know, mix up the event. If people are sitting there cloud camping and you get a spitter, you know, that's just going to rip you apart. Are there any plans to bring back the original survivors? No. Um, they're not dead. Uh, so we'll see what happens with them. Oh, and they're not undead either. So I wasn't trying to make a play on that. Um, with the PC version, it's only in the last month or two we started seeing like proper um, user-made campaigns come through. Well, like anyone who's been working on a campaign over the summer or whatever, will that be able to work straight away with Left 4 Dead 2? Yes. Or they have to change it? So, so I believe what we're going to do is to help with the assets we're going to have. If you want, if you want to play those, it'll be like a, a an asset download you can do, um, which will be into the add-on system. So you'll be able to download all the Left 4 Dead 1 assets so that you'll be able to play those maps right away. And those maps will work. They'll work better if people uh, do some things with what we call uh, the navigational system, right? the nav mesh. If they go in and make some changes there, they'll, they'll be able to improve them, and they'll be able to take advantage of the Left 4 Dead 2 stuff. But the Left 4 Dead 1 maps will be able to load up in there. Um, we've been talking to a bunch of the guys uh, who are making those maps and kind of talking it through with them to see how best we can help them. Oh, and just the, the, SD, the SDK, or excuse me, the Left 4 Dead authoring tools will uh, be coming out at launch. Hello. Um, quick question. Is it going to be at all possible to practice when you're one of the undead for one of the versus modes? Because half the time you haven't got a clue what the hell you're meant to be doing until you're dead shot by the other team. <laughs> so it'd be nice if there was like a level where you just had a little zombie factory where you could go and practice your skills, so to say. <laughs> uh, that's, that's definitely something we've talked about. We've talked about the idea of uh, letting people just play against the bots as a way to practice. Um, you know, that's something we do internally when we're testing a lot. And a, a, four, play, a four team of bots, um, you know, can be a little goofy, but it's still fun killing them. Um, so, yeah, that's something we're looking at. I can't make a promise on that, but I mean, definitely, uh, we've gotten that feedback from a few people that they thought they'd be, that they feel when they're playing verses, they're kind of on stage, and it's scary for them. Uh, they want to have that practice. So, we're looking at it. How about? Uh, yeah, how did you come up with the ideas for the new uh, special zombies? Uh, so uh, when we're designing specials, in this case, uh, we looked at problems. So one of the problems you'll see if you've played versus against a really good team, uh, they'll stick really tight together and they're hard to break up. And you can often, often only break them up with a tank or if you just get lucky with a boomer. And even then, they, they tend to be able to recover pretty quickly. So the charger comes in, and even though they're tight together, they're actually going to pay a price for that because it's going to take one, 
grab that one, send that one flying, or not send that one flying, but send anyone else they hit flying, and then start pounding on that person. So that really breaks up tight teams. Um, the spitter, the problem it's solving, obviously, is people who are just going in a corner and hiding. Uh, you go spit, you go, if you're in a room and, you, and that spitter spits in there, uh, you've got to get the hell out because it's exponential how long you stand in it, the amount of damage it does. So if you think you can just last it out, it's going to end cap you. And then the jockey is for people running ahead or lagging behind, and just to be evil, because <laughs> jumping on someone's back and riding them off the side of a building is just, just fun, yeah. That's the laugh you get when someone does it, and it's just an evil laugh. If you want to know someone's evil, evil laugh, watch them play a jockey. Oh, uh, sometimes when you're dead, it would be like 25 seconds to 30 seconds respawn. Did you ever think of letting the people play as the normal common infected while they're waiting? So um, that's a common question people ask. And so one of the things I think people make the mistake of is uh, when you're playing infected, you are playing as a team. And it's just as much co-op as you are when you're playing as survivors. Uh, if you're wanting to run off and play as a common infected, you're probably not watching the strategy of what's going on well enough. And I know, I mean, I just know sometimes you do know what's going on and you want to come in. But the problem is if you come in as a common infected, by the time we spawn you in there, by the time you get your orientation, by the time you start running at the, at the survivors, you're either going to be shot, which isn't going to be fun, or you're going to be able to hit them once and then get offered to spawn as a hunter or smoker. So what we really do to try to encourage is, you know, if you're talk, talk to your team. Uh, it's one of the weird culture things in the U.S. People talk probably too much on Xbox Live or Steam, where if I talk, play with Brits, it's often almost silent. You guys should talk more. It's a social thing. Um, so talk to your teammates. Say, hey, I'm coming in as a, you know, you're a boomer. Hey, wait up. I'm going to come in. You know, uh, let's plan what we're going to do here. Because uh, you'll find out the best versus teams by far plan. They just don't react. They're, they're planning. They're working together. Did you um, ever think of actually letting a player be the AI director for one time? Uh, to kind of be a, kind of like a dungeon master kind of thing? Well, sort of he could control when the, the hordes would come or when the tank would come and, and try on that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like kind of a commander mode, game mode. Um, we've looked at that a little bit. Uh, that's way far down, though in a sense of that's very different than what Love for Dead is. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we've talked about as well. I think everyone wants to be that evil master lord just uh, you know, wreaking havoc. Um, you announced a uh, realism mode the uh, couple yes. of months back, and do you, could you reveal anything about that? Possibly? Sure. So uh, realism mode isn't just making expert harder. Um, so you know we have all our we have our four skill levels again, and realism mode you can play with any of them. So you can play realism mode on easy, or you can play it on expert. But what realism mode's for is we find uh, people play with the same people a lot. So people who, who work together will play uh, once a week. People, you know, friends from college, they'll play once a week. And those teams excuse me, didn't necessarily just want to play expert or hard. They wanted to be able to be challenged as a team. Because it's real easy just to say, let's make the creatures harder to kill and you easier to kill, right? But it's less interesting. And so with this, what we wanted to do is we remove the glows. We make events like the witch more important now because if the witch hits you once, she kills you. Um, and you die, you don't come back. So there's no safe closets. You can, you can use a defib and get back, but again, that's your team having to do that for you. And the first time you play without glows, uh, we, way early on in development of Left 4 Dead 1, we didn't have glows for a while and it was really frustrating and hard. Um, but the first time you turn around and you go run off on your, by yourself and you're going to go get something out of this building and you go turn and you're like, I've got the pipe bomb. And you're like, oh man, where is everybody? And you have no idea. It's a really different experience. And so realism mode really is about um, pushing the skill of the team. Because if, if a smoker grabs you and pulls you behind some building, you've got to be able to communicate to them where you are because you don't glow. No one knows where, where you are. No one knows what's happening to you. So that, that's the purpose of realism. Um, with the uh, cane field, you said it's much larger than the, uh, the uh, corn field in the previous game. Uh, was there any um, problems in terms of uh, making sure everyone ha could enjoy it? Because there's vast range of computer capabilities out there. Oh, you, you mean uh, technically performance-wise? Optimization, yeah. Yeah, so um, a lot of the things we work on is performance. Um, I think if you, re if, you know, if you read the forums and you're seeing this uh, 360 versus PC, Thing and everyone thinks, oh my god, you're making all these changes because of the 360. Honestly, it's a low-end PC. 
because we want to 